thank you guys for coming today. Um, today's program is going to be by, presented by Carla Meeks. She's with the Longhorn Arena and Event Center. Uh, and she is going to be talking about all the things that they do out there. And they really ramped up in the last couple of years um, on the things that they do. She's, uh, let's see, she has been, uh, Carla graduated from AM Commerce with a Bachelor's in Social Work. And she started out as a juvenile probation officer and did that for 11 years before becoming the director of marketing for Glen Oaks Hospital. And then after seven years with that, she began also working as a marketing manager for the mental health clinic at Greenville and the Longhorn Arena and Events Center. Um, I want to thank this month's uh, sponsor, who is Howard Davis. And without further ado, I'll turn it over to Carla. for inviting me to come and tell you about our facility. Um, we are quite unique in the fact that we have, if you've been over to our arena, um, there's no signs yet. We were getting a sign. It's going to be a nice, huge LED light sign. Um, hopefully to say this is the Longhorn Arena and Event Center and the Mental Health Clinic of Greenville. Um, so it's, it's truly a dynamic. Um, Dr. Ruth Whiteley and her husband, Tim Ryan, uh, decided to extend their uh, practices, uh, one being uh, the Mental Health Clinic of Greenville. It was located on Wesley Street. She's been here a very long time. Uh, Dr. Whiteley uh, has been in practice for over 15 years, and we have some long-term counselors with us. So we have seven total. Um, so in the very front portion of our uh, arena slash clinic, that is the clinic area in the, in the very front part. And then in the back part is a huge arena. Um, and we opened in 2020. Isn't that great? <laughs> oh, wonderful. Isn't that that time? Yeah. And so uh, the reason why we have an arena attached to the mental health clinic is that we do equine assisted therapy. And so if you know anything about like pet therapy, um, you think of like dogs with a uh, patients or clients that they groom the animals or they pet the animals um, while they're actually talking about something that was kind of difficult in their life for counseling purposes. And so we use that a lot with our kiddos. Um, so instead of using a dog or a cat, we use horses. And so they're able to communicate very well and um, partially from your dogs and your cats. So a little bit about horses is um, they are not a prey animal. Um, I mean, they are a prey animal, not a predator. And so, when you think about that dynamic, um, they are actually breeding us as humans because we are the prey. I mean, we are the predator. I'm getting those totally switched up today. Um, we're the predator to them. And so, horses are constantly watching our movements, but they also feel a lot about what we feel. And so what I've noticed with clients is if they are very anxious and they're very nervous, well, the horses then reflect that to the, the client or the patient that we're working with. So right now, we are utilizing the arena in that aspect right now. Um, so we have um, someone that travels from the Princeton area that deals with chemical dependency. So they're inpatient uh, patients, and they come to our facility and they receive treatment. Uh, right now we're working on a contract with Glen Oaks Hospital, and so um, the ones that are in outpatient treatment will walk over to our facility and actually participate in equine-assisted therapy. So after they're out, they're in inpatient, they go outpatient, and then they come to us. And so what the dynamic is, is that, um, to give you an example, uh, they are uh, provided a huge obstacle, okay? And I mean, they have a pole that's set up off the ground. Um, if you've ever seen poles in an arena, like if you get two buckets and you set them up, and you put a pole on it, and you try to get the horse to jump it. So instead of, if you were to go somewhere to watch an event where horses are jumping over poles, you usually see a rider on them, right? I mean, typically. And so instead of putting a rider on them, none of our, no one, gets on top of our horses during equine therapy. It's only grooming, touching, um, it is no riding. Everything's groundwork. So I would go to these 
patients or clients, and I would say, I need you to get the horse that's over 2,000 pounds and has a mind of its own with no halter, and I need you to get the horse to go and jump over that in a huge arena. Most people do exactly what you just did. <laughs> like, how am I going to do that? They, um, so they have to work as a team to figure out how they're going to get that horse to jump over that pole and not run in the arena. It's, it's very, very difficult. We've had patients actually do it, and it took a lot of teamwork. But we reflected on, them. okay, I can see right now that you're very, you're, you're thinking you can't get that done. Or if you hear them saying, all right, what are we going to do? You can pick up that maybe that person's not necessarily a leader. And how does that work in your everyday life? Are you not a leader in your everyday life? Or if you see someone struggle and they give up, well, it didn't work the first time. And not go back and say, all right, now let's regroup. Why didn't that work? You see them, so then you identify to them, well, it looks like, do you give up quite easy? Like, how, how does that reflect in your everyday life? Do you typically do that? Do you have an obstacle put in front of you, maybe at work, and then you just give up? And so it's that true reflection, and you can kind of pick up even from the horses. If you, they're frustrated, the horse is frustrated as well. And so you can see them run off. And it's like, well, why do you think the horse ran off? How many people run away from you in your everyday life? Because you're, you're, you have anxiety and you, you are feeling, that horse is feeling what you feel. So that's kind of a general idea of what equine-assisted therapy is. Um, and if y'all have any questions, please interrupt me and ask. Um, we have a total of seven horses right now that we rotate. Um, they uh, rotate them every day so that they're not overused. Um, so the mental health clinic doesn't just do equine-assisted therapy, though. Um, we work with children from um, as long as they can comprehend um, and play, because we do a lot of play therapy, where they actually play with items within, inside their, um, in, a, in a play room, and they can identify things and kind of discuss things as they play, so it distracts them. And so they're easily able to talk about some hard things, maybe. Uh, but they couldn't just do, if you put a four-year-old kid in front of me and I start saying, how do, how do you feel about that? They don't know their feelings. They don't know how to express that. So we use play therapy. Um, we also work with family counseling as a group, individual, all the way into what we call geriatrics. Um, uh, a lot of couple therapy. Every type of therapy that you can think of, we do it. Either PTSD. We definitely deal with PTSD. Um, we have a counselor that actually deals with the military primarily. Um, and so I'll, I can get into that a little bit. Um, one of the th I'm sorry, my ears are a little bothering me from all the rain that came in. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so uh, we have what we call uh, neurofeedback, biomurofeedback. So um, the best way I can describe that for you to understand is, have you ever seen um, where they put probes on your head, <laughs> like mad scientists kind of stuff? You go in and you actually put, they put probes on your head and it actually looks at your brain waves. And you watch a program like um, Leave It to Beaver, that's your favorite TV show. You watch just a regular TV show and it actually retrains your brain how to think. So a lot of people with sleeping disorders, memory loss, um, ADHD, it teaches your brain how to refocus. Instead of immediately going to a doctor and putting you on medication, you can actually go through this process, and it takes you know between 10 to 20 plus times to do it, but um, it can retrain your brain to operate at its full capacity. You'd be surprised how many people don't use their brain at a full capacity. I could probably say that for myself. <laughs> um, so, uh, we do that as well, and they actually, uh, she does brain mapping, where uh, you actually can see all the chemicals in your brain, and you can see uh, possibly like uh, for an adolescent, someone that it doesn't know their history as far as um, uh, 
genetically having schizophrenia, uh, having a case of uh, possibly going into a depression, all that can be picked up prior to that child actually having an experience. So that's very interesting as well. A lot of the adults do that. Yes, ma'am. I've had brain remapping for multiple sclerosis. Very good. Very long time it took, but it worked. It worked. It yes. did. It, it's amazing what it's it can do. The, the idea of what I was told was they were going to allow me to use a different part of my brain for the things that weren't functioning. Functioning correctly. When you notice I didn't walk in here with a walker on. Oh, okay. Right. Um, there's not enough research, they say, to be able to say that is what it's used for. Like ADHD, they can't say that's exactly what it's used for, but you gave a great scenario that, that it's used for a variety of things. It makes your brain kind of re-trigger or re-route of where it needs to go. Yeah, and it stimulates. Stimulates, yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people sleep a whole lot better than not after <laughs> they do it. I don't know if you've experienced that or not. Um, one of the things that we just started um, is we do what we call game time. And so it's a new way for kids to get together and we go on a Wednesday afternoon um, and they actually play games. And through that they work through therapy and teamworking and self-esteem and stuff like that as they're playing a game. So we started that and uh, Nate Brindley does that. And then we also have our military and veterans program. Um, it is every other week. Um, at the, uh, we do a family session where the families of the veterans and the veteran come out and do equine assisted therapy. Um, and then we also have a time where just the person is there for the equine assisted therapy without the family. Um, so that is a new program that we started. Are you guys working with uh, the Twin Rudders? Yeah. Yes, we are. Um, and they have received a lot of funding and things like that to assist with the military, so it doesn't cost them anything. They come to our facility and receive treatment for free. So, um, so we'll flip to the arena, if y'all like to do that now. Uh, so, our arena was quite small when we first started out in 2020. It was not supposed to be as big as it is or as big as it's going to be. Uh, we were going to use it for equine assisted therapy and probably some like horsemanship clinics. But after 2020, we realized we're doing more um, tele uh, through the computer uh, counseling. We weren't having people come into our office. It was like we have to generate some type of other business um, to supplement. And so we extended our arena uh, so that we could do things like barrel racing sorting competitions, um, and also ropings. So, uh, a lot of people, I have to explain what some of that stuff is. And so, sorting is actually getting cattle and pinpointing one out of a herd, and you have to get that animal over. Well, they actually put numbers on the animals, the cows, and so to say, I want you to start with number five and work your way all the way back to number one and they have to purposely go and pick those uh, numbers out in sequence. So that is part of a competition. Um, and then we have barrel racers. If you, they actually run around barrels and they compete that way. And then we have ropings. Uh, right now, uh, we don't have shoots, but we're getting those. Um, we're actually extending our arena for the fourth time to add the shoots. Um, because it needs to be a little bit longer, so we're going to accommodate that and do that. So if you can, a long triangle, you have the actual clinic in the very front for the mental health, and then you have the arena, the indoor arena, which is climate control, so heat and air, and then there's an open area where it's like a practice pen, which is quite large, and then on the very back of that, we are going to have an outdoor arena, it won't be covered, but it'll be another full arena. So it is growing quick. Um, we do have some interesting events that come up throughout the year. Uh, we have the circus that comes out, and it's called the Extreme Circus. And so it's not like circus with animals. It's actually the, if you've ever walked by or, or come by the arena, and there's a huge ball in <laughs> It's like a huge dome, I guess you could say, 
And again, motorcycles are, I'm sure there's another word within a motorcycle, but they go in circles all the way around and uh, fly up in the air and things that I would never do or let my children do. <laughs> Scary. Um, we have, uh, this month we have a donkey basketball, which I'm super excited about. I think that will be hilarious. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's going to raise awareness for colon cancer. Um, and people rent out our arena for those type of events, but they also have weddings in our arena. Um, they've had conferences and things like that as well. So it's very broad um, what we've done as far as like clinics and shows, but um, people come or rent our arena for a lot of different re reasons. So. Um, that's what we are in kind of a little nutshell. Do y'all have any questions? Do you have to have a referral to be able to come and be a part of the, the therapy? No. No. No, you can call us directly. Um, we do have some insurances that we do accept, but we also take cash. Why do you choose not to use the horses for someone to be on the horse and Benefit sure. from the there, there's a different the to walk and to right. There's a different type of therapy where uh, you use a horse for your own um, motor skills. So someone that um, is wheelchair bound or um, have another mental uh, infraction of some sort. That is for riding, it's for your joints, and it's to move, and it's to do those things. Um, we're just not specialized in that, and so we use our horses for the therapy part. Um, you, when you're using a horse for therapy, and you're uh, watching the reflection, it's hard to do that from the saddle, I guess you could say, um, because they are reflecting your energy. And so if you come and you're very hot, anxious, and have anxiety, that horse is going to feel that as well. So uh, just for safety purposes, it's best to keep it on the ground. Okay. Yeah. But I love the idea of possibly doing that one day for more of just the joints and the uh, movements of particularly kids. Of course, that's where our, our heart Particularly passion. health benefits people that were having uh, hip Problems, problems that riding on a horse was uh, very it does help. beneficial right. on the movement and, and I just wondered why there was a reason that you didn't use it in the Primarily children's our, therapy of, of horse. I had just heard so much yeah. about that. We, we have, um, our primary focus is the brain, I guess you could say, versus the outer body. Um, doesn't mean that that's not something that they wouldn't look into. Uh, I've learned uh, through the two years that I've worked with them, they're very open-minded to thank goodness, right? Because we've expanded so much and done different things, but they're very open to how they can help the community, especially, you know, with Dr. Ruth, it's all about how can we do a full wraparound service for someone? How can we provide everything we can right here? So, any other questions? I'm glad she asked that question because I caught that when you said it as well. And uh, but my question is, if the entrance to your place is facing north, mm -hmm. so from which side of the building is the new outdoor arena going? It is okay. It's going to be on the south side. That would be the opposite end of the entrance. Yes. Okay. Not to one of the others. Right. And so all of the the side that's closest to the interstate will okay. be parking oh, okay. and th there are some corrals there so that people that are traveling they can call up and say hey I need a layover for a night and they can keep their horses there and we have hookups. We don't have a dump oh. station but we have she's just She's just banging for another purpose in the building. I mean, it's, it's so you, you haven't even talked to us about all the purposes yet. Yeah, huh? so there are times where they that we get calls that they need a layover. They're, we're right on the interstate, so it helps them not have to travel so far off of the interstate to get a layover. So I met, I, did you talk about that already? Where is it? It's on, it's on the interstate. Where? Yes, so if you were uh, traveling towards Upper Springs from here, it's on the right-hand side. 
where uh, we're directly across from Glen Oaks Hospital. Oh, that huge yeah. peach pink building. <laughs> I can't decide if it's pink or if it's peach, but it's in between the two. So you know where that is? Oh, sure. Okay. Right off the Fishing <laughs> Street. Yeah. <laughs> we are. We do have the sign in. It's just getting it up right now. So we have a huge LED sign that will be there to display us and tell all about our services too. So everyone passing through will be able to know what we are and what we offer. Yes. The, go ahead. I was just going to ask Scott, you didn't talk about business hours, our, our visitation, our, you know, people who are not our people coming sure. or everything. Um, for the arena, it's open. I'd say until midnight sometimes. It just depends on the event itself. Um, if we have a show on the weekend, they, they just keep going until it, they're able to get everything completed. Um, so, But our, our hours for the mental health clinic, it ranges as well because we want to offer services that you know people that work or, or kids that need to be in school and not be pulled out, that they, they have time to do that. So we have counselors that work from eight o'clock and, and then we have some that come in at, after five and they work until nine or 10 o'clock at night. Okay, that's what I mean. All of our groups are in the afternoons, it's not during the day. So our military services are offered uh, for the equine therapy in the evening, um, along with the game that I told you about, kids coming and playing games and working through some things, um, those, that's in the evening as well. So we get more participation that way. Do uh, the residents over at uh, Green Oaks, do they, are they interacting with other people that come in for the equine therapy? No, um, so uh, we are very big about um, anytime we have a group, anytime we have anything from the mental health club side, the arena shut down because they're in it. So that it's kept confidential. Gotcha. Anyone that comes, we don't want any outsiders coming in to uh, be able to say, or make the patients or clients feel uncomfortable. Uh, so that they are able to freely vocalize whatever issues that they've got going on without someone just walking in on. Well, just curiosity, do you ever just board somebody's horses that they need to be kept somewhere? For? No, because we're not able to offer 24-hour service. Okay. Um, oh, just that, just, I, that was a curiosity. I get that question the all the time. So, yeah, uh, because uh, we do have the stalls and things like that, but... Um, we don't have the main power for that. Yeah. Any other questions? But it's nice to have it in Greenville and not having heard any more about it. I've, I've passed it and wondered what, what it was. You know. mm -hmm. yes. There's been times that there's been, a, a, well, it might be five or six a, a, RVs that are parked there and everything, you know, and I thought, I wondered if that was like an RV station, you know, I mean, how, what was, <laughs> that they had picked there to be, or if there was something going on that people came in there to stay, and I passed it so many, every time the way I come, I always, to get here, mm -hmm. I have to go that way and over the overpass to get there, came and I see it, and I always think, well, I'd like that? to know a little more about that. So, so we did have our, our sign ordered in 2020 to get here. Um, however, it was stuck in China of all places. Yeah, all things were. It was it was stuck with COVID. <laughs> well, but I think that's affected are, all of us. It is, but we're going to get it, and it, I mean we've gotten it here, and it's going to go up, and so there will be a lot more people that will know about it. But we do have a website. We do have we're big on Facebook, so. Um, I'll get you some information on that uh, so that y'all can follow our events if you wanted to and see what we've got going on. Uh, we'll get that to you for sure. But yes, there are times where I go to work and there are so many trailers there. Uh, it, I, they can't park either. I'll just tell you. It's very difficult to find a parking spot with all those trailers. <laughs> you just made a thought, uh, a question come to my mind is, were you involved with horses prior to you choosing this career? Me, myself? Me, yourself. Okay, so my story is that I was raised by an ag teacher. And so from the time that I was little, I was in agriculture. It is very unique.
technique. I will say, I, I told Dr. Whiteley, I don't know how other than God that we were put together. Uh, because I work for juvenile probation, and I would refer my kids over for her to do counseling. And one summer, she came to me and she said, I have a vision. I have a dream. And I need you to help me. I was like, okay, what are we doing? <laughs> she said, I want you to get your kids that are on probation, a group of them, and I want you to bring them out to my home, and I want you to do equine assisted therapy with me. I was like, all right, I got to know a little bit more about that. And you want them to come where? <laughs> like, these are kids that are delinquent. They're on probation. And she said, I really want this. I said, okay. So we loaded up. Um, I was the intensive supervisor of kids on probation, and so I had the worst of the worst, the ones that uh, were falling in between the cracks, as you would say. And I, I was told by Judge Bench, save them. Make sure they don't go to prison. And so this was like, all right, Judge, well, I need to do equine assisted therapy. And he was like, what is that? <laughs> I don't think so. I was like, so I roped him into it a little bit, and that was a part of their community service. And they were very, I'm not going to do this. Uh, yeah, you are. Or you're going to go to jail. And so, okay, we'll go work with the horses. And they didn't, at first, they were just like, well, I'm here, but I'm not doing anything. You know, I'm too big, I'm too bad for this. Um, they got involved in it. And at the end of a six-week taking them out there, they were like, that's my horse. Get away from my horse. I love, you know, that one, he grew he, that one's mine, and um, they learned that they were followers and leaders, and I, I bought into it after that. Um, and so that's how Dr. Whiteley and I met. Um, and then I went over to Glen Oaks Hospital, um, and during that time frame, I talked to one of the CEOs, and I said, this would be amazing for our patients. And each time, it, it's like you had to get them to buy into it to understand it because you're talking about people that are from Illinois and Tennessee and cities and they're looking at a horse going, no way, that's not going to work. With, with patients, why would you do that? And so it's really talking them into it, letting them see it. Um, and so she bought the land beside us. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. So we got a contract uh, when I worked at Glen Oaks and we started doing that with our patients that were suffering with chemical dependency. And so uh, then a new CEO came in, and that contract uh, ended. And so uh, Dr. Butley and I had to call her, and I said, Dr. Butley, I'm so sorry, but we're having to break that contract. And she said, well, that's terrible news. Uh, but that's great news for me, because now I can ask you if you'd like to come and work for me. Oh. <laughs> I was like, OK. And she said, we are expanding. And um, we're gonna oh, we're we're building, and and so because of that, I need you to come and and get people to come and refer to me. I'm gonna need more business, and I need you to market for me. And so uh, it was a great transition, and uh, for my agriculture background, and then me having a social work degree and what I do, mm -hmm. it just collided and it created something amazing. So it was a, it was really good. Thank still you. a good fit. For Thank sure. you. It's because you know the person. That And back when we could go to court, now I remember seeing your head in the courtroom, <laughs> especially what, Judge Beach's office. What has been your success rate? Um, for which side? <laughs> Look, I mean, we have a three, sometimes a three-month waiting list. Um, Dr. Whiteley uh, specializes in child and adolescent, um, and she specializes in court services. Um, she's amazing on the witness stand. There's never a short supply as far as a watch service that she offers. She's she's amazing. What I mean is, okay, so how many usually how many weeks is your uh, therapy last? Oh, that's what it's um, so uh, for which therapy? Well, well, no, you said chem chemical dependency. So, so our chemical dependency with our equine assisted therapy, uh, it typically uh, they are only inpatient for a month and they can possibly get five to six weeks, um, but that's primarily because of insurance and payments and things like that. So we rotate them, mm -hmm. um, but they, they 
So it just kind of depends on what they're coming for. But if we receive someone off the street, it's really based off of the counselors. Okay, so after so many weeks, determine this has actually helped them. Um, well, it depends. Of course, it would have to, for chemical dependency, it would be the relapse if they have or haven't. You know, um, in the world of chemical dependency, um, you're always in sobriety. Yes. Right? You're always an addict. And so it's, uh, it's a continue. It, it would be hard to know because we don't, we don't get the information from the facility that sends over to us. Okay, so but we, what I would say is, is that I've never had anyone go through therapy and on their last visit say, I don't want to go to equine assisted therapy, it's not helping me. So I would refer back to that and say that it's been consistent that every, because they don't have to come to us, they don't have to participate, but each time they do. Well, see, I'm a veteran and I've been diagnosed with uh, severe anxiety. It's almost to the point of PTSD, but they that just not that that I'm not there yet. But uh, and hopefully I never will be. But um, just say somebody with like with PTSD or somebody with what I, with what I have, uh, what kind of success rate and what is or what can consider success as far as how so many weeks of working with these animals. Um, as far as the success rate, uh, sex rate. That's right, with the equine assisted therapy and the veterans or PTSD. Um, again, this has, veterans program has been now for three months. The, the hardest that, um, how do I say this, men don't ex really like to get help. Oh, I Is that the best way to put it? <laughs> or to say that I need help. Uh, especially, um, some of the veterans. Um, I don't. Um, I'm trying to figure out what what that would. I understand why, uh, but how to get them to still come into our doors um, and to be consistently coming um, because it is already free. It's paid for. Sometimes they don't. They come. Um, sometimes they only come with their families. Sometimes they only come individually. And so it's really kind of hard to determine that um, because it has been a shorter period of time. But I'd have to probably refer back to the statistics of just the equine assisted therapy overall. And it's been it's been successful, or we wouldn't be doing it. Well, I know with you know with dogs and cats, um, they've proven that it lowers your uh, blood pressure when you're around them. Uh, it gives you a sense of a euphoria in some certain situation, whatever. So that's why I was kind of curious, I and mean, we're talking about a, an animal that weighs 1,200 to 2,000 pounds. You know, how does someone that is uh, could be afraid of the animal get used to it enough to, to where you can get them to work with them to a point where there there is a, a success rate? That's why I'm kind of curious. Sure, our horses are very docile. Um, if they don't meet our requirements as far as um, as a calm. Uh, they're they're not fresh off the farm, I guess you could say. They're not green, or they're uh, they've never been saddled, or they've never been worked. At, they're worked with every day. Uh, so the difference between a dog is exactly what you said. They are very small. Some people are very afraid of dogs, so it could boost their anxiety as well mm -hmm. if they've had a negative or bad experience. Um, they're. There is a lot to take away from an animal that is so large and has so much of a presence that it does make you somewhat look smaller. It feels smaller um, and that there's dominant, but they don't feel that. A horse doesn't feel that they're dominant over you. And instead, they're looking for you to tell them what to do. So that dynamic is so different. Um, a lot of your pet therapy is, I, I'm happy, like play therapy. I'm having you, that animal, distract me and calm me. Um, where we utilize uh, obstacles or things that they have to do together for a reflective type response. So there's a lot of processing. Uh, I've identified this in you while working with the horse when it did this. Why did you do that? And do you do that in your normal day life? Or how does that distract you from... Um, becoming sober or staying sober, things like that. 
Um, but, but our horses, of course, they are large animals. Um, and a lot of people are intimidated at first, but once they see that they are working together, instead of just one, I'm having to get this to do it, you know, or they're helping each other. Um, again, a lot of it is that reflective, being able to identify something in that person and say, did you know that about yourself? Because just like my kids that were on probation, they were big, bad, tough, I'm gonna, you know, cut your throat if I have to, right? They learned that through the therapy that they were not leaders because they could not make a decision. And when they did make a decision, it never worked out for them. The horse was just like, not doing it. Where a dog, they felt more in control, right? So if I would have used a dog and they could have controlled that dog, they would have felt that presence, right? But utilizing the horse in that aspect with the kid, they realized that they can't, they can't push the horse. They can't, you know, scare the horse over that. But they were scared. And they could be forced to do something if the horse made them do it. So that's kind of the difference. So it's, uh, to me, if you, when you lost a dog or cat, it's really playing and distracting them to be able to, to talk without knowing that they're talking about that's the, something that's hurt them yeah. or affected their lives. For horses, it's, we're utilizing that to make them see things in themselves that they may not have ever seen and to, to, do, to process with them, what does that look like? How do you do that every day? Because many times they don't even realize that they're doing it or um, how much they depend on other things. So it's just, it's really neat, very, very neat to watch. So, any other you started out doing it, but now you're marketing, is that what you're saying, and you're no longer working with the clients? So I was a juvenile patients. probation officer, and so I would take clients to her, yeah. and they would work Oh, together. okay, gotcha. Um, I would be that, uh, if you don't do it on a handcuff, you take it to jail. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're, getting, yeah. you're getting therapy kind of thing. Yeah. Um, then I transitioned over to, I went, I did a presentation like this, um, for juvenile probation, and the CEO of Glen Oaks Hospital saw me do the presentation, and he said, I wish you could work for me. I mean, that's just how it worked. I was like, I don't think that would be a good idea, but then I did. I worked there for seven years, and then because of those relationships and how it kind of was a triangle of working mm -hmm. together, I went and worked with Dr. Watley. But when I worked at Glen Oaks, it was marketing. It was getting up and talking and mm -hmm. um, creating brochures, things like that. So that's what I do for Dr. Wiley. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? We're glad to have you in mm -hmm. the group. I hope so. Absolutely. We love it. Great. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for the opportunity, ladies. <laughs> Thank you both for coming. I uh, wish I had more people this time, but I never know how many I'm going to have. And we do, like I said, we put it on YouTube and uh, he puts it on his channel as well, so people watch it through there as well. And let's see, next month's program is uh, Jack Ammons, who's going to be talking about cotton. Um, so yeah, so look forward to having you all.